So in this problem, we uh, use we, we derive the Taylor series uh, for sine of x centered at pi over four, and then determine which x value for which x values it converges. Now the formula for any Taylor series is we take the sum from n equals zero to infinity of um, the nth derivative x over n factorial and take x minus the center, so this is pi over 4 now, uh, raised to the nth power. So uh, of course here I'm letting uh, f of x equal sine of x. Now we need to figure out uh, the derivatives and then evaluate them not at x but at pi over 4. Right, so, of course, the, we have f of x equals sine of x, then the derivative is just cosine of x. And the second derivative is negative sine of x. The third derivative is uh, the negative cosine. And by the time we get to the fourth derivative, it cycles back around to sine of x. But we're not interested in the derivative of the function. We're interested in the derivative uh, after it's evalu evaluated at x equals pi over 4. So if we evaluate all of these at x equals pi over 4, see that Sine of x is just uh, 1 over square root 2. Uh, cosine of x, or cosine of pi over 4 is also 1 over square root 2. And these are just the negatives of uh, the first two. So we see that um, Taylor series for sine of x centered at pi over 4. It's just going to be of the form sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, well, here we have the nth derivative evaluated at pi over 4. This is going to be either positive or minus um, 1 over square root 2. It's going to be a little difficult to write that in summation notation. So I'm just going to write well, 1 over square root 2. Uh, of course, then we have n factorial, so this will be 1 over 0 factorial times x minus pi over 4 raised to the nth power. And uh, we have another positive term, or another term where 1 over root 2 is positive. Uh, we have 1 over 1 factorial times x minus, let's see, x minus pi over 4 should be 0 here. And x minus pi over 4 is 1 there. And now we have the negative term, so negative 1 over square root 2 times 1 over 2 factorial times x minus pi over 4, quantity squared. And uh, let's see, the third derivative, now it's going to be negative, so we have 1 over square root 2 times 1 over 3 factorial times x minus pi over 4 to uh, the third power, and so on like that. Um, so essentially what's really changing here is um, just the sign on, um, on the coefficient 1 over square root 2. It's positive, positive, and we have two negatives, two positives, and it'll keep alternating like that. All right, so now that we have uh, the Taylor series for um, centered at pi over 4, we want to know what x values is this valid for? I mean, can we plug in any real number x, or is it just limited to a certain point or a certain interval? Uh, well, to do that, we need to take a look at its error function. Um, which we know is uh, greater than or equal to zero. And uh, you know, by the Taylor-Lagrange theorem, this is equal to absolute value of um, 
nth derivative of f evaluated at some point c um, over n factorial times uh, x to the n. All right, and we want to look at the limit as um, n goes to infinity of the error. So this is the same as looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of, um, let's see, absolute value of the nth derivative of um, f evaluated at some point c. Well, we know that the nth derivative of f is either going to be plus or minus sine or cosine. And sine or cosine evaluated at any real number is, always has absolute value less than 1. So we can say that this whole thing is less than or equal to absolute value of x um, to the nth power over n factorial. Which means that the limit as n goes to infinity of the error uh, is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, the absolute value of x to the n over n factorial. And by a lemma in the book, I believe it's uh, lemma 4.4.4, uh, this is equal to zero. Essentially what that's saying is that factorials tend to grow faster than, um, than exponentials. So, you know, by raising x to successively higher powers of n and dividing by n factorial, n factorial is going to get bigger faster, so this is going to start tending towards zero as n goes to infinity. But what this means is, uh, in terms of, you know, our problem or our, what we're interested in, is that I didn't specify um, any specific x. So this is for... Uh, any real number x, which means that um, you know the, if the error converges, then or if the error converges to zero, then the function in itself of the series um, is you know converges at that point. So this converges for all values x, which means that um, that's the Taylor series converges for all real x.